Vision is not complete when the signal reaches the primary visual cortex. It lacks meaning until the signal is carried to visual association cortex in parietal and temporal lobes, where it is interpreted in the context of space and memory. This video reviews the occipital parietal segment, also called the dorsal perceptual stream. The dorsal perceptual stream carries the signal to parietal vision-associated cortex. Here, visual information is integrated with auditory, somatosensory, and motivational inputs to allow visual spatial and attentional function. Unilateral lesions in the dorsal perceptual stream cause hemispatial neglect. It is much more common with right than left parietal lobe lesions. In the mildest form, if stimuli are presented simultaneously on both sides of extrapersonal space, patients will not notice the stimulus on the side contralateral to the lesion. The test used to elicit this phenomenon is called double simultaneous stimulation. The response is called extinction. It is often observed in all three sensory modalities, visual, auditory, and tactile. When instructed to bisect a line segment, patients with hemispatial neglect will divide the line far to the right of midline. Ask to fill in the hour symbols on a clock face, they place all of them on one side. When they are told to circle all the A letters in an array of different alphabet letters, they find the A's only on the side of the lesioned hemisphere. Unlike patients with homonymous hemianopias, these patients fail to explore the opposite hemispace. The eyes of patients with hemispatial neglect are often shifted toward the side of the lesioned hemisphere. This is called a gaze deviation or gaze preference. This patient's eyes are slightly deviated to the right. When instructed to look to her right, she can do it. When instructed to look to her left, her eyes barely travel past the midline. When her head is forcibly rotated to the right, her eyes move past the midline to the left. In other words, she cannot execute saccades to the left, but an intact vestibulo ocular reflex triggered by the oculocephalic maneuver, moves her eyes to the left. The dissociation between a deficient saccadic system and a preserved vestibulo-ocular reflex is called a supranuclear gaze palsy. In this patient, the unilateral left supranuclear gaze palsy is part of hemispatial motor neglect caused by a large right hemisphere stroke. Bilateral lesions of the dorsal perceptual stream cause patients to be utterly disoriented in space. They misreach and walk tentatively. They cannot interpret pictures. They cannot decipher the Ishihara color plates, including the control plate, which is not a test of color vision, but of spatial vision. They have difficulty reading and telling time from an analog display because visual space looks jumbled. You see the hands on the clock? Yeah, I see the hands. What time is the clock? It says 9 o'clock. The small hand is going to the 3. The large hand is going to the 12. What time would that be? That could be... Uh, these deficits make up the Belint Holmes syndrome. It occurs acutely with border zone infarction in systemic hypotension and chronically in Alzheimer's disease. Here is an example of how Belint Holmes syndrome interferes with visual spatial perception. Watch how this patient tries to count colored pencils. You want me to point to them? Mm -hmm. She misreaches and miscounts. One. Oops, did I do that one already? Two. Three. Four. Five. She's actually making two errors. 
The first is optic ataxia and inability to judge space. The second is simultanagnosia and inability to perceptually aggregate objects in an array. These errors are part of Balint Holmes syndrome, which may also include inability to generate psychotic and pursuit eye movements. Balint Holmes syndrome arises from damage to both inferior parietal lobules. Delayed diagnosis of perceptual disorders of vision is common. Why? Because the standard tests of vision do not detect them and because manifestations are often so bizarre that caregivers attribute them to poor cooperation or a psychogenic disturbance. Vision would have little survival value if you could not use it to distinguish friend from foe. To do that, you will need visual recognition, which is carried in the occipitotemporal segment. That is covered in Vision Pathway Part 7.